I used to use Evernote all the time and I've got over 1000 notes created. I've used it across a period of 5 years and was my note taking app of choice to get me through my university years. So in this video, I'll explain why I no longer use it. Yep, that's right, in 2025, in my opinion, for most people, there are better alternatives out there. I'll discuss the pros of Evernote, why I switched away from it, what app I switched to and the specific use case where Evernote may still be a viable solution. Chapters below. And yes, this is all based on my personal experience, your use case and your situation may vary. I may not have created a million notes like some other users out there but I think I've used it enough over a long enough period of time to provide some valuable insights. So with that let's begin. Oh and quick disclaimer if I haven't made it clear already this video is based on my personal use case. All the opinions about everything in this video are my own. There's no sponsors going on here and in regard to Evernote it's still a great product for the right person but as my workflow changed I'd just like to share my experience on searching for another note taking app. Anyway on with the video. A quick overview of Evernote. So let's get everyone on the same page. I'll try to be relatively quick with this. So Evernote was created in 2004 and as the name suggests is a note taking application which has gained quite a lot of popularity over the years and for good reason too. First of all was the fact that Evernote was super cross platform then and still is now for that matter being accessible on Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android and even via the web. So massive positives right there on a compatibility front and during the time when smartphones were beginning to get popular the ability to take notes on your phone and have them seamlessly sync and be available across your other devices was definitely a very powerful and unique feature. Another historic advantage of Evernote, and I certainly made use of this during my time using it, is the fact that it supports so many different file types. I think at one point Evernote's main slogan was to remember everything, which was kind of a flex to many other platforms at the time, on how Evernote can store your receipts, your homework pictures, your documents, voice recordings of that lecture and so much more, all in one app that you can access across all your devices and use it as a bit of a brain dumping or offloading tool if you like. And with the rising popularity of Evernote over time, external tools also gained popularity, like extensions for your browser and plugins, the most notable of which being the Evernote Web Clipper. Even today, a lot of people are very fond of the Web Clipper due to the seamless integration offered in various browsers. And the final big advantage that Evernote still has, though many other platforms are closing the gap quite quickly in this department, is the Evernote search functionality. I think Evernote was one of the main popular note-taking apps that first got optical character recognition, OCR for short, and the ability to search for text in your handwritten notes was definitely a massive advantage for students and those that scan or take pictures of a lot of paper. Alright, I think that covers most of the key features of Evernote that most people started using it for and probably still use it for to this day. Yeah sure, there are many more features that are built into the app these days and depending on your use case, you might have a particular feature in mind that you can't live without, but I think that should give you the general idea. Why stop using Evernote then? Or look elsewhere for personal note taking apps specifically in 2025? Well, there are a few reasons really, and all of them are not really obvious until it's too late. Let me explain. So about a year ago, my use case with Evernote changed. I wasn't uploading as many scanned documents, I was predominantly typing my notes rather than having lots of other elements in my notes, and the devices that I needed my notes on and access to were my desktop and maybe my phone on the odd occasion. Because of this, I thought that I'd make a backup of my notes and potentially consider using something more lightweight or something completely completely different altogether. Besides, I've been using Evernote for many years and there might be something that would suit my needs better. Well this is where the problem starts. I went to back up my notes and trust me, Evernote makes it very hard to export your notes as you have to manually do each notebook by right clicking and then pressing export and once you do, you'll notice that you have a few different options. The .enext format, the single web page HTML option and finally the multiple web pages HTML. Now if you hover over the little i in the corner of these options, you'll get a bit of information on each. Either way, you'll find out that the only good option for exporting your notes is the .enex file type. Now this note format, if you haven't realised by now, is proprietary, meaning that it's great for creating backups of your notes to be read and imported by Evernote again at some point in the future, but for importing into other applications, not so much, despite what Evernote tells you. Sure, you might be able to import this format into some specific applications if they choose to support .enex, but even then, all your formatting, links, tags and various other attributes of your notes don't always play nicely, and oftentimes the import is far from ideal. Now you might be able to see the issue here. If you have many notes, thousands or tens of thousands, your previous notes that you spent many years working on, perfecting and referring back to are essentially stuck inside of Evernote. Provided that you continue to use Evernote and Evernote only, everything works just fine and there's no need for you to even think about or worry about this. But even if you do plan on moving away from Evernote for whatever reason at some point in the future, which you might not even know about yet, it will be quite a painful process if and when you do. Not to mention this isn't even considering 
considering the fact that Evernote might one day do something that doesn't suit your workflow, change their prices, their UI, other aspects of the app, and to effectively have your notes and knowledge held to these changes was something I only realized when I tried to switch away from it. And no, this has never happened before, but considering that most people don't even back up their notes and are effectively just stored in the cloud on Evernote servers, what happens if Evernote has a data breach or data loss, for example? Again, this hasn't ever happened before, to the best of my knowledge, but it is something that we should all seriously consider when keeping important stuff in the cloud. This bit isn't just Evernote specific, but obviously also applies to other applications as well that you might be using for which many people have no backup for. Because of all this, I even switched to OneNote at one point, but it isn't something that I used for all that long and was more of an in-between step to the app that I'd finally settled on. More on that later. Anyway, going back to the topic of Evernote changing things, well, if you've been following their recent developments, you'll be no stranger to some of the crazy things that have occurred over the past two years that let's say haven't gone down too smoothly with the community. Which brings me on to my next point about pricing, especially when considering similarly priced apps. Starting with general pricing, Evernote no longer has a free tier. Yep, you heard me right. Yeah, sure, nothing is free these days and you shouldn't expect something to remain free even if it is free at the moment. I completely get that. Software development is expensive and it needs to be sustainable in the end, but paying a subscription to make and keep your notes just isn't my style. I think a one-time price option might be better for those who are really committed to the app for the long term, but in the current subscription world, even those options are starting to phase out. Taking a look on the Evernote website, they offer three tiers, free, personal, and professional. To be honest, I don't even know why they have a free version anymore. Like 50 notes and then you have to pay? Seriously, how can this even be called a free tier? It's more like a free trial. Anyway, their personal tier is £8.99 a month. Not sure how much this is in other currencies, but I'm sure it scales accordingly. Either way, for this price, you get all the free stuff, but with a much higher note limit and notebook limit, device limit, and monthly upload limit. Now looking at this table on Evernote's website, comparing the different tiers, the free tier actually gives you quite a lot of the core experience. As focusing purely on the part of the table where the differences lie, there isn't anything too substantial that you're missing out on. But the fact they have a note limit of only 50 notes in a single notebook is just absurd to me to use for any reasonable amount of time. Because of this, you can effectively say that Evernote is £8.99 a month for personal use. Yeah, you get it at a slight discount if you pay for it yearly, but you get the idea. And the final thing that did it for me was the fact that the app itself has become way, way too bloated. It's in the name, Evernote, not ever to do, not ever calendar, but you get the idea. There's just too much going on in the app now. Before, the core part of the app used to be in creating the best note-taking experience. Now, it's experience last, and how can we get this person to subscribe to our premium tiers first? Like, just look at this. Loading the app for the first time in a while, I'm absolutely bombarded with a load of pop-ups and discount upgrade notifications, update the app, limits I have left, a load of changes that have occurred since last time, etc, etc. You get the idea. Not to mention, is it just me, or has the app gotten slower, laggier, and buggier, and it's just a nightmare to navigate on Windows? Oh, and this is all on the desktop version, by the way, on Windows specifically. This isn't even going into the mobile versions or other platforms that Evernote supports. But from what I can see from the App Store and recent reviews, I think other people may be having similar issues. So this could be just teething issues for now, but it really isn't that great of an experience in its current form. So yeah, all in all, not the best really. The lack of control of my data, both in the form of backups and access with using the app, along with the app becoming heavily bloated and not having a true free version anymore, just persuaded me to seek out other options. Comparing Evernote to other apps. Now comparing Evernote's offerings to that of its key competitors in the note-taking space, this is the rough breakdown that I get when comparing various aspects of each app and the price of each. So yeah, not anything too comprehensive here, but it should give you the general gist. Though I would like to mention a few things I'd point out from my own personal perspective that make certain apps more or less appealing. The key features for me being the device support, the cost per month, as well as it ideally being non-proprietary in the format that stores your notes. Starting with Notion, it is a little pricier compared to Evernote, but for the package you get, I would definitely say that it's quite an upgrade if you can make Notion work for you. It's just more of an all-in-one tool really, not to mention the free plan on Notion is far more usable, as you have unlimited pages and blocks, provided you're the only workspace owner. Essentially, you could use Notion indefinitely for free, with little restrictions that come over time. With Evernote, you'll get past the 50 note limit pretty quickly, and there's no way to get around that. Moving on to OneNote, I feel the price is less of a barrier here, as most people have Microsoft Office already as part of an existing purchase or plan, regardless of how you acquired it. With OneNote, you also get a very robust feature set, and as the name suggests, it's primarily a note-taking application, so it's a very strong contender to Evernote. In my opinion, I would say that it's one of the best apps out there for note-taking, if, like I mentioned previously, you already have it, especially considering you have decent offline support with OneNote, unlike Notion and many of the other cloud-based apps out there. The only thing that stops me from continuing to use it, yes, I have used it before and done a comprehensive video on the best features here, is the fact that it still
still remains proprietary, just like Evernote and Notion, in the format that stores your notes. Next up is Apple Notes. It's okay, but I can't really comment all too much on it, as I've only had access to it via my iPhone, as well as via the web. And as you've probably guessed, Apple Notes is limited to Apple devices in order to use it effectively. Because of this, I wouldn't really recommend it to most people. Roam is next, and I don't really have much experience with this app personally, but it is a bit limiting in the sense that it is a paid app only, with no free option. And along with this, it seems to be much more of a research tool, rather than being purely for note taking. Bear Notes again falls into a similar camp to Apple Notes, with it being exclusive to Apple devices, though its priority lies in a modern and minimalist UI that is markdown based at the core, meaning that your notes aren't stored in a proprietary format, which is definitely a positive compared to Apple Notes for example. Following on from that, we have Obsidian. Overall, Obsidian is definitely a solid choice in my opinion, as it is completely free to use and is based on the markdown format, just like Bear Notes. Again, this means that your notes aren't stored in a proprietary format and can be migrated to other apps that support markdown. In addition to this, the device support is excellent, as it includes every operating system, including various Linux distributions. Though the only negative you could say is that the app does have an optional paid service if you want to sync your notes to different devices. Now, this would be a deal breaker if this was the only way to sync your notes, but as I mentioned, the service is optional, meaning that you could sync your Obsidian notes via any cloud or shared storage location, so definitely a solution to that one. So yeah, that's my perspective on some of the alternatives to Evernote. Anyway, let's move on to the app that I finally decided to switch to. So after a lot of searching online, and I mean a lot, I settled on Obsidian. And if you think this app is for coders or something, then think again. Honestly, I've seen this misconception so much online that I just don't get it. Regular people who have never even coded a single line before can use Obsidian just fine. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent. Now many people might suggest Notion at this point, and yes, I certainly did consider Notion alright, but the more I look into it, it's definitely an excellent project management application first, and everything else second. Sure, you can do note taking and personal knowledge management in Notion, but for me, it just felt like the wrong tool for the job. It's like bringing your entire toolbox with you just to paint a wall. Sure, your toolbox contains some paintbrushes that'll get the job done, but what you really needed was your painter's kit, which is what Obsidian is in this analogy. I hope that makes sense. Not to mention, Notion comes with some of the key drawbacks that I spoke about earlier regarding Evernote and is paid in order to access most of the good features. Many of the other applications I also looked into had similar drawbacks, if not in these categories, in some of the other ones instead, which again just wouldn't suit my personal needs. Anyway, enough on other apps, how does Obsidian suit my personal use case based on the things I've already discussed? Well, for starters, Obsidian is a local first application. Yes, you can sync it via the cloud if you really want, and is based on the markdown format. Now, I could talk about this for quite a while, but the the markdown format means that your notes in Obsidian are stored behind the scenes in a folder of your choosing as markdown files, which are very similar to text files. This means that they can be opened easily in various other applications as well as without an application at all if you like. This is super powerful from both a data privacy and control point of view, but also from a longevity point of view as well. Knowing that the notes that you create are essentially going to be readable by any program at any point in the future is certainly very powerful, unless of course computers stop supporting text files, which doesn't take a rock scientist to work out how flexible that format is. Because of this, you don't have any proprietary formats to worry about, exporting to mess around with, and can just instead copy the backend markdown files to another location and that's it, you've made a backup of all your settings and data for the application. It really is that simple. You can store this folder where all your notes live from a backend point of view wherever you like. This means you can choose to make your Obsidian note collection local only by storing this folder on your personal computer for example, or you can store it on a cloud server, or even your very own network drive. The choice is really up to you. This level of control over your notes is just not present in the likes of Evernote, OneNote, Notion, or many other apps for that matter. So if you're someone who cares about this kind of stuff, then I'd strongly consider taking this element of things into consideration if you're ever choosing a note taking app. Okay, so that covers the longevity part of the issue that I had with Evernote, but what about the other issues? Well, moving on to price, Obsidian is completely free and is likely to stay that way going forwards. The business model is sustainable through purchases of the business version for organizations, but if you're an individual user, you can choose to pay for an experimental version that gets updates early if you so choose. Not only this, but you can also choose to pay for Obsidian Sync, which is a cloud service that is offered from Obsidian themselves, which in turn obviously helps support Obsidian financially. And if that isn't enough, you can always donate to the team and the developers directly if you so choose. All in all, quite sustainable, and their website gives you confidence in the fact that this is a quality product built around a community. And the final thing I wanted to mention, and something that I've been quite impressed by really, is the fact that Obsidian is a super lightweight app application, and this shows in its performance. After using very recent versions of Evernote and the performance issues I was facing, it's a massive difference going to a local first, fast, responsive application like Obsidian. With Obsidian, there's little to no loading time, even if you are loading Obsidian files that 
live in a cloud, like myself most of the time. The UI is one of the most fluid and fastest that I've seen of any application. And yes, that even includes loading the infamous graph view, which can cause my laptop to choke for a split second. But after that, everything is fine. And to top it all off, the interface is very modular as well. So if you only use certain tabs, or sections, you can add and remove these or reposition them as needed. So yeah, all in all, an excellent application for my personal use case. And we aren't even going into the stuff like the thousands of free plugins that you can use to get even more functionality out of Obsidian. The amazing tagging feature, which fundamentally helps you to link your notes as opposed to folder holding, which you can still do by the way, if you so choose, along with other innovations like the canvas feature, for example. Many of these could be considered additional features of the application, but as the name suggests, they remain as additional features. I'll keep the core note taking experience intact and the main priority. Though despite all this, I'd just like to round off the video with some reasons why Evernote can still be suitable and a useful tool for certain use cases, even if it doesn't suit my personal needs all that much anymore. Not to mention, Obsidian isn't perfect either, so I'll also touch upon some of the downsides of using it in this section too. First of all is the web clipper. If you use the Evernote web clipper a lot, then you might struggle to find something that's like this in other applications that works exactly in the same way and is as seamless to set up. Following on from that, I'll I'd also mention the fact that Evernote is a set and forget tool. Now it's not like you have to baby Obsidian or anything, but the fact that you can just sign in, pay a monthly fee and away you go with all the changes synced across every device you own might be compelling to many people out there. This goes hand in hand with file support. You can literally throw any text file or type into Evernote and more often than not, it's recognized and if it's not, at the very least, it's embedded into that note as an attachment and stored in that note within your Evernote account. Yeah, sure, you have a monthly upload limit with Evernote, but even then, most people aren't hitting this in a month. And this kind of goes hand in hand with one of Obsidian's downsides, which is the flexibility in other types of media. If you predominantly work in text and the occasional image here and there, Obsidian will be just fine. But if you want to do drawings or attach lots of files or other more complex non-text formatting like annotations or tables, then Evernote is still a strong option in 2025 regarding this. And the final use case where Evernote really shines is in its search functionality. The optical character recognition is still great as ever and the ability to search in documents as well is certainly a massive advantage that Evernote still has, even if it isn't leaps and bounds ahead like it once was. I should also mention that both of these apps aren't open source, if that's something you value. I know there is quite an argument to be made from a privacy point of view regarding this, but personally, I'm fine with Obsidian not being open source. If this means I get a more established application, developer base, and it's still highly private and secure. Not to mention, if this is really a concern for you, there are a couple of apps that are gaining traction that are similar in functionality to Obsidian, but open source. One of which being the open source LogSec application. So in my case, if I ever felt that Obsidian just wasn't working for my needs, then because Obsidian uses the markdown format, I could switch over to something like LogSec, for example, with relatively minimal friction. So yeah, even then for me personally, I won't be switching to Evernote again anytime soon, based on my personal use case. For you, this might be the opposite, and that's cool too, but I do hope that you have learned something and can reflect upon some of the concerns that I had for my use case and whether or not this applies to you. I plan to make a full dedicated guide on the Obsidian app at some point, so stay tuned for that. But it is going to be quite a long beast of a video, so it might be quite a while before that's done, but it is in the works, I can assure you that. In the meantime, Time, why not check out this video on OneNote tips and tricks? If you're a OneNote user that's not convinced by all this, or if you're a Windows user, then why not check out this playlist on a load of other useful applications that you might not have really known about that add a ton of functionality to your PC. Anyway, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.